information shared on the following program is for general information purposes only. It does not constitute legal, tax, investment, or other advice, nor is it intended to recommend any particular investments, products, or financial instruments. Always seek advice from your financial advisor, attorney, or accountant with regard to investment, legal, or tax questions. Welcome to the only show in the country dedicated to helping savers worry less about money, the Worry-Free Retirement, with your host, nationally recognized retirement specialist and four-time author, Tony Walker. When it comes to your money and the people working hard to get a hold of it, there is a truth that arises in the mind of savers that cannot be denied. The truth that sometimes those after your money will tickle your ears with options, offers, and sales pitches that, yes, may sound too good to be true. Yet, interesting enough, over the years, when it comes to the many sales pitches on where to invest your money and the various strategies for supposedly making you boatloads of it, the many too good to be true sales pitches offered to savers is endless. And with all the bad financial news and worries in retirement, this tickling of one's ears by advisors telling you what you want to hear, in my opinion, is getting out of control. Too good to be true advisors and financial entertainers tickling your ears, telling you you'll make 10% on your money in retirement. Too good to be true annuity peddlers pitching free bonuses without disclosing the catch involved to get them. And finally, the too good to be true sales pitches offered by Wall Street telling you how we do better when you do better and forgetting to tell you that we do better when you do worse. Yes, the tickling of the ears is alive and well, which is why I remind you why these too-good-to-be-true sales pitches must be examined carefully before taking the bait. Because in the end, as the old saying goes, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Well, welcome, folks, to the Worry-Free Retirement. And yes, I am that little man in the sweater vest, financial truth detector and fiduciary, Tony Walker. And before we get started exposing some of the most half-truth telling financial pitches coming from financial advisors, let me introduce three folks in the studios today that are too good to be true. America's favorite financial sidekick, Mr. Aaron Orender, Louisville, Kentucky's most laid-by graphics artist, Mr. Derek Hudson, and finally, Miss Meek and Mild Mary Beth Combs. Okay, it's one of the oldest sayings in the book when it comes to looking before you leap, one born out of common sense, intuition, and experience. You got it. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Yet, after personally meeting with more than 15,000 savers, I continue to witness well-meaning savers repeatedly falling for the numerous too-good-to-be-true sales pitches and half-truths when in the end many will admit they should have known better. So why is this? Why do we humans so easily fall for financial products and financial strategies offering benefits that we know are in our heart of hearts are too good to be true? Because quite simply, when it comes to getting something we don't already have, we sometimes hear what we want to hear. Which is why today I'm going to arm you with how to avoid falling for the too good to be true sales pitch and how to compare apples to apples and not apples to oranges when making financial decisions that may negatively impact your retirement. I'm Tony Walker. I'll be right back. You stay tuned. You're watching The Worry-Free Retirement. Have you recently retired, been laid off, or offered a pension buyout? Has the company you work for moved, been acquired, or closed its doors forever? And finally, do you have a 401k with a previous employer you'd like to move to safer territory? Then take advantage of this opportunity to move your 401k or lump sum pension to Tony Walker Financial. Let's meet in person to discuss your retirement options. Log on now to TonyWalkerFinancial.com to schedule your free, no obligation appointment. Let us help you today. When looking to purchase two different products or even when comparing two different financial advisors, there's an old saying that is really a humdinger. Never compare apples to oranges. This is so true when it comes to the most important financial decision of your life. Who are you going to trust with your life savings in retirement? 
And while turning over your life savings to an advisor you hope is well equipped in the art of retirement planning, unfortunately, I meet many an unsuspecting saver who have fallen for the too good to be true pitch and regretted the investments they have made. In other words, rather than comparing apples to apples and making sure the advisors are illustrating the same thing, they're comparing apples to oranges and as a consequence, sometimes end up with lemons. In fact, as we are getting ready to see, with more than 10,000 people turning 65 each and every day, there's a lot of advisors and financial companies touting their too good to be true sales pitches on money and retirement, when in many cases, that's right, these too good to be true sales pitches are really and truly too good to be true. So to help us understand how to fairly compare what one advisor is pitching versus what we at Tony Walker might be offering, I asked our own Gina Tutwiler to run down to the local supermarket and pick me up three different types of fruits, apples, oranges, and lemons. So let's get to these right now and take a look at these three fruits. Now, as you'll notice here, these three fruits, God created all three of them, but he did not create them all equally, nor did he mean for the apples, oranges, and lemons to all taste the same thing and have the same use. You see, fruits and financial products are a lot alike. While we might try to throw all the financial products and sales pitches into one fruit basket, you can't do that. In other words, you can't compare apples to oranges. They are not the same. In order to compare one apple to another, one financial product or advisor to another, you must compare them to similar fruits and or fi similar financial products. Take this example that I recently was handed over to someone who was getting a second opinion from me after visiting with an advisor. So let's take a look at this basically two pager that this advisor provided this particular person that wanted a second opinion. So first of all, my first opinion is they've got a ton of money going into one annuity company. In fact, it looks like about 75% of their retirement and savings is going into this one annuity, which is an income annuity. Nothing wrong with that, but this does have some fees and there is a bonus applied, but that bonus is going to affect the crediting methods. This is the kind of stuff we can get into when we meet. So that may not be good to have that much in one annuity. The second thing I've noticed on here, they call it the recovery leg. That's the investment bucket they've put this money in. Uh, they're assuming they're going to grow it at 6% after fees, which the fees are pretty high at 2%. Now, let me say something about the market and making assumptions. This is a very scary thing because although the stock market has done well over the long term, you can't imply that with, with what we call retirement planning because in retirement, you're gonna be taking money out of these accounts at different levels. You might need the money, you've got stock markets fluctuating. So just to assume that we can put money aside and it's gonna grow at a certain interest rate is not good planning. That's not what we should be doing here. Now, you might look at that and say, well, Tony, is it really that much off? And what do you all do? Well, I've been doing this so long, what I like to live by is the old Will Rogers Creed, which simply says this, Always expect the worst and you'll never be disappointed. I like that. So let's take a look at what some of the assumptions we might make. And this is our income software. By the way, uh, this was two pages. This is a complete binder that you will get for free from Tony Walker Financial, illustrating all of the, the assumptions, everything behind the assumptions, all the understanding of how we're paid. A lot of information goes into that. We want you to be fully informed and not just jump at the first thing you see here. So notice on this, this is when we're illustrating income annuities. So if we used an income annuity like this, notice Derek, if we can highlight this, we're assuming that what's called the contract value grows at 0%. Now, a lot of people might say, well, that's terrible. What if it grew to higher than that? Well, it might, but we, we don't want to show an income annuity growing more than that because like this case, there's a 1.2% fee, and this is what's called an indexed annuity. So indexed annuities don't grow as much as sometimes the stock market. They pay a percentage of it. So income annuities with bonuses will pay what's called a lower crediting method. So we want to be on the safe side here and assume that the contract value, not the income side, grows at 0%. What about our Charles Schwab platform? Like this, let's take a look at that, Derek. On this one, whenever we show Charles Schwab in this example, we've got our management fee, which is clearly stated there, which is eight tenths of 1%, one of the lowest in the industry. And by the way, on our Schwab platform, through our split IRA concept, we pick out all the funds, we do all the management, we get all the distributions for it. We do a lot of work. Calculate all your RMDs, all that for eight tenths of 1%. There are no additional or hidden fees for all the planning services we provide. But notice here, and this is even assuming a growth account. 
So even if we put you in one of our growth accounts, which again, over time should do really well, we're not going to assume 6% after fees. We're going to assume about 3%. Why do we do that? Well, you can see in our income software in this example, for whatever reason, I'd have to look at this plan, for whatever reason, this particular client wanted to take money out periodically. So we were trying to show them if we took these withdrawals out here, how that would affect the balances over here at 3%. So this really helps give that client a visual for not just this big one sheet uh, plan that this person got with just a few assumptions. We're going to be able to dive in and look at each asset, when to take it out, what might happen if we take it out, what these rates of return mean, and how that's going to affect their overall income planning. So if you don't have something like this, a well thought out game plan from someone who's done literally thousands of these, my question is, why not? To get your free game plan, there's a couple things you have to do. First of all, you have to qualify for the game plan. Now, how does that work? Well, you have to be retired or nearing retirement. You also have to have money that can be invested in the game plan. Obviously, we get paid in one of two ways, either through commissions or fees from our Charles Schwab platform. So you have to have money that can actually be transferred to Tony Walker Financial since we don't charge for planning fees. But nevertheless, if you're sitting there thinking, well, Tony, I'm not sure. I just want to talk to you and see how you can help. Maybe this game plan's for you. Maybe we can just sit down and see how we can help you in other areas. All you got to do right now is log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com, TonyWalkerFinancial.com, or you can simply call the toll-free number on your screen. Well, there's a real problem going on now, and that is more and more people are passing away with what's called these tax-infested IRA and 401k plans, and the beneficiaries are getting confused on how to fill out what's called death claim paperwork and creating unnecessary taxes to them. So when I return, we're going to go through that. Some very, very important stuff. You'll want to stay tuned for that. You're watching The Worry-Free Retirement. I'll be right back. Can you trust? It's one of the most important decisions you'll have to make. Question is, are you ready? Well, we're here to help at Tony Walker Financial. You know, we care more about you than we do your money, and we have over 2,000 happy clients and an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau to prove it. Rolling over a 401k, confused about Social Security, maybe you're afraid of running out of money. Learn how to use and enjoy and protect your hard-earned money. Log on now to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and let's get started. You know what one of the biggest culprits of the too good to be true sales pitches to ever cam come down the financial pike was? The 401k plan. You see, in 1978, when the 401k was first passed into law, the 401k was mainly pitched to employees as a tax saving plan for retirement, whereby the employee could stockpile money for the future on what was referred to as a pre-tax basis. What the poor unsuspecting saver was never told was that one day, all the taxes on that 401k or IRA would have to be paid either by the employee when they retired or by their kids and grandkids when they died. This tax that is buried inside your 401k or IRA is what I refer to as the tax tumor. And believe me, folks, it's not going away, which is a problem when you die, because if your kids or grandkids take an immediate distribution of your account after you die, all the taxes owed on it will come due immediately to them, and these taxes can be huge. So please listen very carefully. At Tony Walker Financial, we have over 3,000 clients, and many of whom are well into their retirement years. And with such a large number of retirees as clients, many of them are starting to die, and what I'm seeing is beneficiaries who inherit their parents' or grandparents' 401k plans or IRAs have no clue how to properly fill out the paperwork to postpone the taxes owed upon receipt of those funds. In fact, our own Mandy Houchins, who is in charge of overseeing our death claim department, has anywhere from 10 to 15 death claims going on at all times for our clients who pass away. Now, with that said, we are starting to see mistakes that our clients' adult kids and adult grandkids are starting to make when those same children or grandchildren start to transfer the deceased parents' IRAs over to them, and thus, in some cases, creating huge tax bills in the process. 
Oh, speaking of beneficiaries inheriting these tax-infested 401k and IRAs, I was surprised one day in our Louisville office by a very young man who randomly showed up at our offices. When asked how we could be of help, he said, I'm here to see Tony Walker about getting some money. I invited him in and quickly set him down and asked for the details of what he needed, only to find out that he was the 18-year-old grandson of a client of mine who had just passed away, and he wanted to settle the claim and get his grandfather's annuity, which was about $75,000. After carefully explaining his options for either rolling the $75,000 over to his own IRA so he could postpone the taxes, or taking the entire lump sum out right now and paying the tax without batting an eye, he said this, I'll take the cash. So let me show you on the whiteboard to share these options with you just how it works when you inherit an IRA from your parents or grandparents. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to imagine dad's IRA, okay, he's passed away, and let's just say it's worth $300,000, all right? Now the custodian would be, who is this with currently? You know, is it with an insurance company? Is it with a stock brokerage firm or a large uh, brokerage house? We're going to imagine that this person had an annuity, so that means the $300,000 was with the insurance company. They are the custodian of the funds. Now, what happens when he dies? Well, the beneficiaries, in this case, he had two children. We'll call it child one and child two. We'll say child one is 50 years of age, age 50, and child two is 55. So what happens is they are going to notify, since they're the beneficiaries, they're going to notify the insurance company of their father's death. The insurance company is then going to send them what's called death claim forms. Now keep in mind, you cannot submit death claim forms until you have a death certificate, certified death certificate. And we always recommend that when you get these funeral homes to issue these death certificates, you better get a bunch of them because anymore, everybody's going to want their own death certificate. So please order plenty of death certificates because you'll need them. But anyway, so what the children are going to do, they have this particular paperwork from the insurance company and they have one or two options. And before I share the options, let's imagine that these two beneficiaries, keep in mind, they are not our clients. This is the client, he's deceased. We're just simply trying to help the beneficiaries navigate through this paperwork and help them decide what they wanna do with the money. So let's imagine child number one. Uh, so obviously they're gonna receive one half of this or $150,000. By the way, that's kind of the neat thing about uh, beneficiaries with IRAs and 401ks since they do not go through probate. You can add multiple beneficiaries. You can do different percentages. Always kid, if you like one, more, one child over the other, give them a little bit more. But seriously, we can help you with all that, but it doesn't have to be 50-50. But in this case, that's what we did. Now, it's interesting. This person makes about 80,000 a year of income, okay? And the goal is to pay off the home, which, uh, let's, let's change that. Let's make it 100,000, okay? So the person says, gosh, I've got a home loan of 100,000. Uh, if I take this 150000 out, knowing it's taxable, that's fine, but I want to pay off the home. Well, there's no problem doing that, but you've got to remember, when this person, who's probably right now, I'd say in a 12% federal bracket, when this person takes this amount out to pay off the $100,000 home, that's going to jump them into a 22% federal bracket, and they're also going to have to pay 5% state taxes on it. So there's a lot of taxes involved in doing that, but of course, they could do that if they wanted to. Now let's take the other person age 55. Let's say it's, uh, this person is married and between her and her husband, they make $300,000 of income right now. And she's probably thinking, I don't want to take this money out because I'm already in a 22% bracket. If I take this out, it's even going to probably throw me in a 24 or higher. Could be even up to a 35%. So in her case, by law, she can defer this or postpone it for up to 10 years because her goal is to use this to supplement retirement. And also, since this is kind of found money, maybe she could even retire a little early. Maybe she was thinking about retiring at 65. Now this might help her retire at 62. We can help her think through this. So on the one hand, this is pretty straightforward. This would be what's called a lump sum settlement. So here's some paperwork in terms of what that might look like. And in this case, this gentleman, the young man says, all right, I'll just take the lump sum. It goes up to the custodian. The custodian gets the paperwork requesting a lump sum. The custodian is going to cut a check for $150,000. Every bit of it is taxable. Okay, pretty straightforward. This young man knew what he was doing. Now let's say Sis and him are talking 
And he mentions he's got this paperwork and he's going to take a lump sum. And she says, well, I want to transfer it over to my broker. I've got a broker or an advisor, or I'm going to do it myself. We've had that happen. Uh, so if we were handling that, then we're going to give them the paperwork. We're now removed from the situation. They could put it with us, but let's say they choose to take it elsewhere, which is fine. Here's the problem. If this person here doesn't realize that they have to have an account number established at the new broker, or they're going to do it on their own, this is really important, folks. You have to get your own individual IRA established. It's called an inherited IRA. Make sure you get your own account number. And if you fill this paperwork out and you check lump sum and you do not put that new custodian where you want to send it, you don't reference the account number, here's what the insurance company is going to do. They're going to do what you tell them to do. They're going to take that processing form, that claim form, they're going to see that you want a lump sum just like your brother took, and they're going to shoot you $150,000 and every bit of that's going to be taxable. So in conclusion, let me share with you the four most important things to do before ever submitting any paperwork to a company on a death claim process. Number one, confirm with the custodian if they require their own death claim paperwork, which most of them do. Second, assuming you wish to roll over that 401k or IRA to your own IRA in order to postpone the taxes you're going to owe on it, make sure that you have an established account with an established number first before sending the paperwork in. Do not send in the paperwork to the current custodian without that information. Number three, if you wish to take the tax hit now and realize that you're going to pay taxes, make sure you check the lump sum box that's usually listed on most, most death claim forms and remember that that's going to be included as taxable income and could increase your social security taxes and other taxes, so be careful there as well. Number four, if you're the child or grandchild of one of our clients and they pass away, please know this. The only way we can assist you with all of the paperwork is if we handle the new IRA account. If you wish to handle it yourself or have your advisor handle the paperwork, that is fine by us, but you are responsible for filling out that paperwork correctly. So be very careful, make sure your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed, and I hope this really helps. Okay, when we come back, I'm gonna talk about the Bible, talking about the too good to too be true syndrome and the idea of getting your ears tickled. Does the Bible have anything to say about that? It sure does. Let me get a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. Wondering how much money you'll need to retire? Probably a lot less than you think. I'm retirement specialist Tony Walker, and for the past 36 years, I've helped thousands of savers determine when to retire and how much money they'll need in retirement, and I can help you too. To meet in person at no cost or obligation, let me invite you to log on right now to TonyWalkerFinancial.com or call the toll-free number on your screen. We look forward to talking with you soon. Ever had somebody tickle you in the stomach? Kind of like this? I don't know about you, but I think the whole idea of someone randomly tickling another is quite strange. I, for one, do not enjoy being tickled. But just in case you're wondering who in the world came up with the idea to randomly attack and tickle another stomach, I asked your own Derek Hudson to find out. Tickling was discovered in 1996 by the Tyco Toy Company while on a red fur expedition in Sesame. One voyager, a young man by the name of Jim, heard a strange noise coming from the brush. He described it as a high-pitched giggling, like that of a three-and-a-half-year-old falsetto monster. <laughs> tickling quickly hit the store shelves that holiday season and was in such high demand that fights and riots broke out when stocks became limited. Luckily, the tickle trade has since settled. Yet it's important to remember, folks, tickle responsibly. While most of us probably don't like our bellies being tickled, surprisingly, when it comes to our falling victim to the too-good-to-be-true sales pitches offered up by the world, the Bible says there is one part of our body we humans do enjoy having tickled, and it's our ears. The outcome of all this tickling of ears is, well, in the end, usually no laughing matter. Check it out in 2 Timothy 4.3 where the first Christians who were enjoying their newfound freedom in Christ soon became discontent and instead of turning to God's truth to stay the course, 
sought others who would tickle their ears and lead them to their ruin. Teachers and other so-called experts who knew the art of ear tickling and telling others what they want to hear and in the end creating dangerous results for the hearer. Strange that we would want our ears tickled when we already have everything we need. Armed with the good news of Jesus Christ, enjoying the very presence of God's Holy Spirit living within us, you would think we would be content with just that. But no, since we're human, and since we are always thinking there's something better, we seek others to tickle our ears. You see, the too-good-to-be-true offers of the world appeal to one thing that we all struggle with, and that's how to be content with the things of God, and more importantly, remain content no matter what might happen to us or around us. Paul struggled with this same thing as he reminds us of this in Philippians 4, 11, and 12, where he says, Whether in good times or in bad, I have learned to be content in any and all circumstances. You see that, friend? It doesn't matter whether things on the surface are good or bad. By God's grace, He will see you through. He doesn't promise to tickle your ears with what you want to hear. No, He simply promises the truth of what you need to hear. Moral to the story, whether things in your life are going gangbusters or your life is in the pits, be careful when you wish for things and then seek to find them. Don't let others tickle your ears, but instead turn an ear to what God has to say in the Bible. And when all else fails, which sometimes it will, you have a choice. Listen to God's truth or go have your ears tickled by the world. Or as Jesus likes to say in Mark 7, 16, if any man has ears to hear, let him hear. Did you hear that? Well, how about you? As we film this show on March 8th, 2022, are you content with what you have and where you're investing your money right now? With wars raging, stock markets tumbling, gas prices through the roof, and the cost of a good strip of bacon, heaven forbid, sky high, are you now feeling tempted to venture out to find others who will tickle your financial ears by promising you things that you know deep down are simply too good to be true? Well, rather than being discontent and doing something you might one day regret, I've got a better idea. Before you fall for the latest too good to be true sales pitch, let's at least talk for a few minutes to be sure that what you're thinking about doing is right for you. I'm retirement planning specialist and fiduciary Tony Walker, and for nearly 38 years, I've made it my life's work to talk to savers about their options and which options are right for them based on their unique situation and circumstances. Over the years, I've personally overseen and orchestrated more than 5,000 written game plans, just like the ones we discussed today, and I'd like to see how our process might benefit you. So, to schedule your free 10-minute fiduciary phone call with me, all you have to do is one of two things. First, you can log on to our website at TonyWalkerFinancial.com and just click on that Let's Get Started, or of course, you can call the toll-free number on your screen 24-7. Well, until next week, I've sure enjoyed visiting with you, but between now and then, if all else fails, you be worry-free. Make it a good one.